at Gregory Lincoln Middle School, I had an old Volkswagen that were, we made into an art car, and we were going to the Main Street Drag Parade, I believe, and all of a sudden the, it died and the battery fell through the floor. It was an old, old vehicle. And so that was before cell phones, so I ran. We were over by the Museum of Fine Arts. I ran there, used the phone, called the school, and Officer Vu, who was our police officer, he comes running with a bunch of coat hangers. He pulls that thing up, makes this big basket for it in the back, and hooks everything back up, and that Volkswagen made all the way through all the parades. So every, every year, every year, there's some odd thing that happens where we all have to figure it out. I, uh, I started, I was an art teacher for many years, well, eight or nine years before I decided that to do an art car would be a wonderful thing for my Edison Middle School kids to do. I had skated in the Houston parades, the new music parade and all that, you know, with, and I decided that I needed to do something to inspire these kids on the east side to get out of their little neighborhood and, and explore. And so we, I, there was a class of, I think we had 12 kids and we got a Volkswagen and my principal actually let me drive it down the hallway, took the doors off of Edison Middle School and let me drive it down the hallway to my classroom. And for three weeks we worked in there, you know, and it was fun. We just made this wonderful thing. We won first place. It was shocking. Um, but, but it was, that kind of started the whole thing. And I saw the benefits of, of these little kids from the, you know, the east side, all of a sudden were being treated like these, these artists and these creatives. And, and so they just grew so tall and they were really happy. And, and I still am in, con the very first art car, I'm still in contact with about five or six of them. And they still say that was one of the best things that they ever did. I'm, I, again, I'm really big on community art projects and working together as a team. I, when I grew up in West Texas, we were on sports. Everybody was on some kind of a team, and you kind of learn to um, plan something and then follow through with it as a group. And, and so with an art car, we do plan it from beginning to end. It's not my idea. So they come up with the ideas. Um, you know, I have each of them kind of give me their drawings, we put it all together in one big drawing and we try, it kind of sort of looks like it, some things that you can't functionally do, but we really shoot for it. But they learn how to um, get along and they learn how to work together as a unit and to put their, their, their egos aside, some of them do, egos aside. And they also learn, you know, uh, how to be more of an adult where they are talking to people like you or, or the media or somebody else's parents or family. And they learn how to communicate as an adult. And then when it's all, when, when all this stuff happens and before you know it, um, they are um, getting their picture made and, and feeling very important. Um, it all makes sense to them as how they work together as a team. And I do stress the teamwork. And I think it's the most important thing ever. Nobody, has, n nobody on the car has more power than anybody else. Some people, this is their first car, so they just kind of sit there. Some of the kids just kind of sit there real quietly. But we all decide together if it looks good or not. Working on one of my art cars, or probably any art car, I just know from my experience, has changed my students' lives forever. Because we are working, I'm working side by side with them and I'm trying to you know, help them visualize what they want to do and their little part and encourage them and, and, and feed them and be their Uber driver and their counselor on top of the creative process because we do spend a lot of time together. The, it's a one, the they have a 180 change, I promise you. A few of them are just gonna kind of be whatever, but the majority of them have a 180. They, they, they hold their head up, they talk to people, whereas or they're down here with their phone. Then afterwards, they're up, you know, talking to people, and they, and they they understand that art is not just something you hang on a wall. Art is is being creative is everywhere, and so it, it becomes a whole different process. Well, I think that's what we are lacking in our education, especially with computers, yeah. and it's very um, sterile and very solo, 
And so there, even if you're online, you're not really online. You're online, but you're not really online with all these people because they're not. You're not face to face. There's not much uh, human contact. And I think having uh, things like this are important. And and I think sports and and music and dance and all those things um, that kind of make a person a, a more whole human being. You get all the facets and you get to connect. I think it's extremely important. I. I have been doing this for this is for 30 years. I've been a teacher for 36. I have a uh, hundred students that I talk to that I that I've taught in art car through the past. At least a hundred. Yeah, we're on Facebook. Facebook is magic. It's magic. Well, I buy the cars myself. Oh. Every one of them. Well, All 33. I guess, I guess yeah. You a budget. Somebody no, I don't get a budget. <laughs> I buy them myself and that I own them and I can do the insurance on them and I can do what we want to do with them. So no, I, the, the school does not buy them. I get a small budget, but I'm very good at, because I was an inner city art teacher for so many years, I'm very good at scrounging for supplies and, and things and experiences that are free for all of my students. So, so it's um, this one, I happened across this car at the Orange Show and it was sitting out in their field, and I was I, I knew that the kids had decided they wanted to do a Texas artist. And we kind of went through the famous Texas musicians, and Stevie Ray Vaughan, a couple of the kids said, oh, my dad loves them, and then one kid said he did like them, and, and so before you know it, it seemed like the thing to do. And um, so I was looking for a car, I was kind of having a hard time, because my budget, my personal budget's $500. And I was at the Orange Show. I looked in the field, and there's this 78 Chevy Caprice. And Stevie Ray Vaughan had a 66 Chevy Caprice. So I thought, well, this is made in heaven. So I was able to acquire that car. We did drawings. We decided what was going to happen. And then we started. Sometimes you have to change mid-flight. You know, we, we were going to do all these grandiose things, and it just didn't work with the design. But that's part of the beauty of doing a big project like this is you have to be flexible. And you learn to be flexible. I am very good at talking to people about giving things. And these, these the past couple of cars, I, I had a connection with this uh, jewelry store called Charming Charlie's. And they were going to just, they were just throwing away all their stuff that was broken or that they didn't use in their, in their uh, store. And I got, I asked them if they could donate some of it and it just became this landslide. They've been so kind and so wonderful. Ace Hardware, I was able to talk to Ace Hardware through Elaine Dillard and before you know it, we have our silicone. And I go through about $3,000 worth of silicone every car. So that was donated. There's another, you know, the foam, we had to buy the big chunks of foam to carve because all those, everything is carved out of foam. Um, but, but that's gotten, because oil has gotten so much cheaper, it was like half the price it was two years ago. And then the synthetic stucco that's on there, I got from what's called Coreb America. A, a wonderful man, Mari Pineda, has given it to me for 20 years. So I just, you just talk. I talk a lot. I talk to people a lot. And so I'm able to get things. After well, every, sure. this is car number 33. And so yes. what happens is that, you know, it's very nerve-wracking until it gets done. Because at the end, I really have to, you know, be a real mean person. But that's what a coach does, right? And I'm kind of a coach. You got to get them inspired. And then when when the parade goes, I mean, I always have tears in my eyes when the when I'm in the parade because I'm with all these wonderful kids, and I form a bond and relationship with them. And some of them, I, you know. It's just, it's just, a, a, it's an honor to be part of their lives and to make a huge difference. And that's what I feel when I go through the parade. You know, art cars are, are really supposed to be public art. And we have to involve the public. And, and I know a lot of people do their little cars and, and you know, but, but it, it, should be, um, it should be out in the public and it should be seen. And other people should be encouraged Maybe not to make an art car. Not everybody wants to make an art car. I don't drive one anymore. I mean, I just drive a, you know, my incognito car. But, but it would be, um, you know, be encouraged to be uh, who they are. However, if they're different, 
you know, whatever they feel like that they're so different they can't even talk about. Uh, an art car artist or any artist, anybody in the arts, should be able to encourage a human being to, to be who they are and not have to hide anything and explore and, and especially kids now they, they're, they've got to try out some stuff. They don't know who they are yet. They've got to try out some things first. So I think the arts is a beautiful place.